In a story that is both shocking and kind of relieving, 13 people have been charged in plots against the Michigan government. Seven are being charged by the Michigan attorney general over plots against law enforcement and the state Capitol building. And six people are being charged by the FBI for a plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who they describe as a tyrant. Now, I say this story is shocking because we're actually hearing that right wing groups are making plans to shut down what they view as tyrannical government to go after people they feel are committing treason and hold mock trials. This is well beyond extremism. And it's extremely troubling considering Gretchen Whitmer lost her court cases. Her powers are being stripped and the AG said they will no longer enforce her unconstitutional edict. The right is winning. Plots like this only make things worse. And if it's true that other right wing groups are plotting things like this, and the FBI has said that right, far right groups are actually a serious threat, it's extremely troubling when you consider that they're winning their, their lawsuits. In Pennsylvania, for instance, Trump has declared victory in Pennsylvania and Michigan over lawsuits that say the COVID lockdowns are unconstitutional. Now, I understand these people view the governor as committing an unlawful act, and the courts have agreed, but this is too much and too far. Now, for the other group of individuals, the other seven, they were planning on going after cops. I mean, that may as well be Antifa as far as I'm concerned. We do not want civil unrest and conflict. We want normalcy and peace. But it is true, unfortunately, that these Democrat governors are absolutely abusing their power. And it is true that there are cops who are also just falling in line and following orders. And it's a serious problem. But the problem is resolved in the courts. And that's the good news that the courts are ruling in favor of actual constitutionalists and the right. And the Democrats are actually losing. Now, my bigger fear is what happens in November following the election. If we see Michigan and Pennsylvania jammed up because of these changes in the rules, there may be other groups like this. But let me just tell you, set the record straight. I do not fear far right groups and right wing militias at all. You know why? Because the Fed stopped them. That's why it's relieving. I'm not worried about this. They have informants. There are people who know these these individuals who are who are telling the feds, look what these groups are trying to do. There are right wing individuals calling them out and shutting it down. Where are the Antifa informants? 133 days of rioting and low tier terrorism. I say low tier because they're not showing up armed and kidnapping people. They're burning down buildings. And it is a here's the way I describe it. Right wing extremism. I guess you can call it right wing. I don't know how, how else you describe it is a sharp blade. When it strikes, it's piercing, it's terrifying, it's shocking, but it's easily sought out. It's easily discovered and shut down. And that's why this story is in front of us right now. The far left is more like a blunt object, a repeated smack over the head, enough so that there's too many people. The feds can't stop them all. And they attack homes and burn down buildings. And I'll tell you what scares me more. We have a federal law enforcement apparatus shutting down groups that are trying to kidnap governors or other extreme activities, which, which I'll, I'll remind you is detrimental to the actual conservative cause to the right, to Republicans, because Trump is winning in these cases. It makes them look bad. But the feds shut them down. That makes me feel safe. Good. But the left gets away with it. The Democrat governors and mayors allow it to persist. And it's partly why you probably see right wing individuals call for trials where they, you know, storm a Capitol building, take the governor and then have a, 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 a treason trial. My fear is what happens after November 3rd. And I got to tell you, I'm not worried about the right wing groups. I'm worried about the left wing groups that seem to operate with impunity. Let me show you what's going on with these stories and break down what happened. But we also have more news. The Democrats are talking about removing Donald Trump under the 25th Amendment in some kind of unhinged last ditch effort to stall. I have no idea. It makes no sense. But I'm going to show you exactly why I believe the far left is a more serious threat. And, it's, and it has to do with the fact that the feds deal with the actual serious threats. Antifa is getting away with it and they're attacking people's homes and they're escalating their tactics. Meanwhile, these dudes who go on Facebook and talk about these 
extremely unlikely and unhinged plans just get rounded up and arrested very easily. Let's read the story. But before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are many ways you can give. The best thing you can do is share this video. Perhaps many people don't know this happened. Or perhaps you think that I give a reasonable take explaining the difference between left and right wing extremism in terms of why I think one is more dangerous than the other, considering that they're both particularly dangerous. But if you think I do a good job and, and my rationale is sound, please consider sharing this video to support my work. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's read the story from the Associated Press. 13 charged in plots against Michigan government. They say, there's an update. I'll start with the breaking news first. Six men were charged with plotting to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer at her vacation home in reaction to what they viewed as her uncontrolled power, according to a criminal complaint unsealed Thursday in federal court. The men plotted for months, consulting and training with militia members and undertaking rehearsals in August and September. According to the complaint, four of the six men planned to meet Wednesday to, quote, make a payment on explosives and exchange tactical gear, the FBI said in in the court filing. The FBI quoted one of the accused as saying Whitmer has no checks and balances at all. She has uncontrolled power right now. All good things must come to an end. Creepy statements. But they weren't wrong in that regard. She does have uncontrolled power, but they were wrong in that there are checks and balances. When she started enforcing and and declaring these unconstitutional edict lawsuits were filed, she lost. It's the same thing I say about resisting arrest. In order for society to function, police need to be able to arrest people. And sometimes they get it wrong and sometimes the cops are bad. But you don't win the fight by fighting with a cop. You don't win the fight by storming the governor's vacation home or whatever. You win in the courts and they did. They won. And she was like, I don't care what the court says. And the AG says, well, too bad. We will no longer enforce your decree. They won. This plot was insane. The government used informants and undercover agents to thwart the alleged plot. The six men were arrested Wednesday night and each faced up to life in prison. U.S. attorney Andrew Burge called them violent extremists. Quote, all of us in Michigan can disagree about politics, but those disagreements should never, ever amount to violence. Violence has been prevented today. Detroit U.S. Attorney Matthew Schneider told reporters, and it's about consistency. Good on the FBI for guess what? Playing it fair. They're going after Antifa in Portland and Seattle. They deputize the police in Portland. And guess what? The extremists, there are screeching and panicking. But this is the perfect example of why I think The feds are doing a good job, and I'm not a big fan of the federal government, mind you, but I think lawlessness needs to be prevented, and I think we do need criminal justice reform. But take a look at this. The government used informants and undercover agents to thwart the alleged plot. Okay, where are the undercover agents in Antifa? Where are the undercover agents and informants on the far left? Why can't they get that done? This is why I'm not worried about the far right, because the, the FBI easily shuts them down. You see, many of these right wing groups that whether whether they're actually far right or whatever that really means, they don't know how to organize as effectively and they don't know how to hide like the left does. Now, we have seen what is described as right wing extremism in these mass tragic events with, you know, shootings or whatever. And these people are dangerous and we have to do what we can to stop them. And that's what the FBI does with informants trying to find out who these people are to prevent this from happening. And when they do thwart it, I'm eternally grateful because think about it. We've seen some really dramatic and terrifying moments where these lone, I guess you call them right wing extremists. It's hard to describe because, you know, what right wing really means is is dependent upon who you're talking to. Left wing seems to have a universal understanding, even among people who are self-described as leftists. But among these extremists, when these mass tragic events happen, everybody wished wishes it was prevented. In this instance, it seems they may have prevented something. That's good. I'm not worried. The propensity for things like this to happen, or I should say the likelihood, is rare. Meanwhile, we're on day 133 of far left riots where they're actually attacking people's homes. How do we stop this if the FBI can't shut them down? They can shut this down. I feel safe. If, you know, if a bunch of Proud Boys march on my property, I'm not worried about them. I've said this before because they're not going to do anything. They're not going to smash my windows. They're not going to get into fights. They're going to walk around, wave flags and leave. 
Antifa, on the other hand, have already started attacking people's homes. They've actually threatened people's lives and in Portland actually killed a guy. Think about that. Why didn't the FBI stop Michael Reinhold? This extremist who was armed in the past walked, stalked a Trump supporter and put two bullets in his chest. Why couldn't they stop that guy? Meanwhile, these guys get stopped. You see why I'm not super concerned about this? Let me put it this way. I am worried that some of these extremists may actually get these plans off. I'm worried that some of these people are plotting even today. But I'm actually kind of confident the FBI can go after him and shut him down, as they did. Now, there's an update here. It's not just these six men. They say in an update, Michigan's attorney general has charged seven people with plotting to target law enforcement and attack the state capitol building. The announcement comes after six others were charged with plotting to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer uh, for what they viewed as uncontrolled power. These other guys are accused of targeting law enforcement. I'm sorry, man. I don't care what your political, political alignment is. If you're trying to go after cops and, and kill or, or, or hurt them in any way, you may as well be Antifa. My criticism is the same. I am for police reform. I am for law enforcement reform and criminal justice reform across the board. But I think you don't just throw the whole system out. We do not live in a fascist totalitarian dictatorship, as exemplified by the fact that people of left and right can be arrested and charged with this. But I do think we have a problem if it's very easily the right that gets targeted in the media, targeted by FBI, and the far left keeps doing this over and over and over again. Now, I want to give a shout out to Michael Tracy, who made an interesting point. He said, looks like very elaborate long-term use of numerous FBI informants in that alleged Michigan militia plot. FBI polls entrapment schemes constantly with a wide range of targets from mentally unstable radical Muslim teenagers to purported right wing militia groups. You may want to familiarize yourself with these tactics. This is actually a good point when we consider they used informants to stop this group. Where are the Antifa informants? Serious question. We had that one guy in uh, uh, Tacoma, I believe, firebomb an ICE facility. Why didn't they stop it before it happened? Where are the Antifa informants? Is Antifa really just better organized? Are these right wing groups just bad at what they do? Or could it be that the FBI uses entrapment schemes, meaning they seed these these calls to these individuals? They tell them, hey, wouldn't you want to do this? Hey, how about this? And when the guys say yes, they arrest them on the spot and then they parade them around in media. Ha ha. We we stopped the far right. I don't know who these guys are. All I know is what's being reported. They're innocent until proven guilty. But if I can easily see a story, and there's been other stories where far right groups get, get, you know, get stopped, disarmed or arrested, why should I be panicking about this? Why is it that these leftists in media won't talk about Antifa? Donald Trump must condemn white supremacy. Joe Biden doesn't have to condemn Antifa. He can deny their existence. That is what scares me that they're going to people's homes, they're attacking them in their home, that Black Lives Matter and Antifa are getting violent and nothing is done about this. I almost didn't want to do this segment because I was like, we get it, man. If a right wing group steps out of line in any capacity, be it extremists or whatever, the regular conservatives will get banned. The extremists on the right who are plotting to kidnap a governor will get snatched up immediately. Black Lives Matter, Antifa? Nope, they'll get cut loose over and over and over again. Now, I want to be fair and say there's real reason to believe that Gretchen Whitmer was abusing her power. I believe she was. The court ruled as such. Michigan's Supreme Court rules against governor's emergency powers. After high court decision, Michigan AG will not enforce COVID orders. You see, Gretchen Whitmer was even trying to defy the courts after they said her orders were unconstitutional. She said, yeah, well, I have 21 days before it goes into effect, which is technically not true. My understanding is that she has 21 days to challenge the ruling. If she was just like, I'm not going to challenge it, but I'm, I'm going to keep doing this for 21 days. That's an abuse of power, in my opinion. And that's scary. The fact that we are experiencing this level of lawlessness and tyrannical behavior from these Democrat governors, in my opinion, is very terrifying. So I'm not surprised that you see stories of right wing groups saying something has to be done about it. But I'll tell you this. It's wrong. It was wrong. It was a mistake. And I'm telling you, you got to be calm and deescalate. Trump declares court ruling on Whitmer's emergency powers a big win. Trump was winning. Now, let me let, let, let me just add, I think the the more hardcore libertarian types, they don't like Trump either. So, OK, fine. Maybe it's not a perfect argument, but there's a lot of right wing groups that view Whitmer as a tyrant. 
But Trump is is dancing, de- declaring a victory. Her, her, her unconstitutional edicts were struck down and the AG abandoned her. Trump declares victory. Also in Pennsylvania, Trump seizes on judges ruling that Pennsylvania lockdown is unconstitutional. If you just chill, you might actually win the hearts and minds of the people. We are dealing with fourth generational warfare, clever tactics from Antifa. They know not to escalate to the point where these men did because they know it will shock the nations uh, to their, it will shock Americans. It'll scare them. It'll be used as propaganda by the left to claim the far right is the real threat. No, these people were bumbling buffoons who got caught. And that's what happened. And sometimes these people don't. And it's a problem, but the FBI easily shuts them down. Antifa knows if they keep their terrorism to a low tier, they'll get away with it. And what that means is throw a rock through a window. No one's going to launch a national news story and there's not going to be a major news cycle because of it. This story on the 13 people, oh, it's, it's, it's fire. It's popping off on Twitter because it's scary. But Antifa, 133 days of riding. Wow. Not scary enough, I guess, because they draw it out. They'll threaten you. They'll burn down your business. They will tell you they're coming for you, but it's not scary enough. A blunt object is not as scary as a gun. So when the extremist groups on the right say, or, you know, or whatever you want to call it, say they're going to strike, that's scary because they will strike like a precision scalpel, whereas Antifa will strike like a blunt object. We just had National Guard units put on standby ahead of possible civil unrest this fall in two states, in Minneapolis uh, and Minnesota, and in, because of Wauwatosa, because of Minneapolis, and because of Wauwatosa, Michigan, I'm sorry, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, the National Guard was actually deployed. And now they are putting National Guard on standby because of the far left. Let me just reiterate one more time. I'll read the story. Don't you get it? The, these, these, the, the right wing extremists, the far right, they get shut down like that. Not always, but enough. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about right wing people coming to my homes, my, my, to my house. I'm worried about Antifa. Check it out. The National Guard has put military police units on standby in two states to respond to any potential civil unrest following violent protests across the country this summer. Pentagon officials confirm two units Total 600 troops equally split between Alabama and Arizona. A National Guard Bureau spokesman said the units will be ready to deploy within 24 hours if requested by a governor in another state. The forces in Alabama would respond in the eastern half of the country, and those in Arizona would respond in the west. Additionally, the Guard has has bought more than $200,000 in new protective equipment and increased troop training on proper procedures in dealing with protests. They're not talking about Trump supporters. These people in the AP story, not Trump supporters. Trump supporters aren't going out and threatening law enforcement. Trump supporters aren't going out planning to kidnap governors. These are militia groups. And sometimes you may find they overlap with the right, just like sometimes you may find that Antifa overlaps with the general left. I don't think it's fair to say that the Biden supporters are in league with Antifa. But they overlap in many instances, and Joe Biden does bend the knee. And what I often say is the threat from Joe Biden is the pandering, and that the far left says it's easier to overthrow Biden, a doddering old fool, than it is to overthrow Trump. To me, that's worrisome. These groups that would try and kidnap Gretchen Whitmer, their concern is over the Constitution. And apparently, according to the story, it has little to do with Trump. It has more to do with people violent in the Constitution. And as we've already seen, many of the libertarian groups that have gone out and joined Black Lives Matter, Boogaloo Boys or otherwise, tell them straight up they're on their side. So what you need to understand about the Trump voters, they're not staunch libertarians. They're Trump supporters. Conservatives, as I was told by some libertarians, are just statists, just like the the Democrats. The Democrats and the Republicans do have a lot in common relative to these other groups. I just think the Democrats are more likely to pander to the far left. And to me, that's particularly worrisome. Now they're deploying the National Guard because unrest is going to erupt and it's going to be coming from the left. I don't understand why they can't just go and arrest these organizers like they do these other groups. Maybe it's because the far left is better organized. So let me tell you this. As Spike Lee recently came out, the famous director, and said, we're on the verge of a civil war. I know, cue the Tim Pool memes. I hear people say that the right 
will win in a heartbeat. I don't think so. I really don't. They may be better with weapons. They may be better trained, but they're not better at organizing and they're not better with communications. The left is. The left has had decades of plotting against the government. So they know what to say and what not to say. Code words, specific language to avoid getting caught like this. My bigger concern is that Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube are on the side of the far left. And if conflict breaks out, a constitutionalist doesn't like tyranny, I'm not super worried about. They'll probably leave me alone. Morality police who are in league with big tech, who can shut down communications, who have already gone to people's homes and threatened them. That to me is scary. That to me is very scary. Well, Nancy Pelosi is once again entertaining an exercise in abuse of power, questioning Trump's health. They say they'll be talking about the 25th Amendment. Another reason why I'm more concerned with Democrats than Republicans. Mike Pence was sitting in that chair in the debate, and he's cold, collected, kind of boring. And I mean that with all due respect. It's kind of a good thing. Meanwhile, the Democrats are doing everything in their power to disrupt Donald Trump and the Republicans. So let me explain to you. This video should be the perfect example of why I'm more concerned with the left. Donald Trump is, you know, he talked about uh, locking up Hillary Clinton. Okay, I'll tell you what. When it comes to Trump, when it comes to Hillary, when it comes to Republicans or Democrats, if they commit a crime, lock them up. I don't care. If you have clear evidence, put them on trial. And if they're convicted, to prison with ye. But for the past four years, the Democrats refused to accept a, uh, the, 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 the election results and refused to engage in a peaceful transfer of power, targeting Trump with scandals and hoaxes and smears. They've disrupted his presidency to the best of their abilities. It now looks like they're cheating. So what do I see? I see Donald Trump not getting a fair shake in the media, and I see the FBI easily, easily investigating the claims of the left and targeting right wing groups. Bubba Wallace, that guy claimed to have found a noose in his parking garage or, you know, his NASCAR garage. FBI shows up, shuts it down. Oops, wasn't really a noose. I guess it's good it got debunked. But think about how quickly the FBI runs out at the whims of the left versus what? Antifa's been going on for 133 days. And what do we get? Also, take a look at what the FBI did to Trump. I guess you had rogue FBI agents targeting Trump with lies and smears and framing his subordinates and his and, and the people he has working for them. That's what I'm, I'm afraid of. I'm not worried about some right wing group with their dumb plots because they get caught. It's easily. The system knows when the right goes too far. The system does not know when the left goes too far. And they essentially operate with impunity to the point where Nancy Pelosi, this is unhinged, by the way, is talking about Trump's health and saying, we're going to be talking about the 25th Amendment as if that's actually going to work. The 25th Amendment requ- would require, in, their, in this context, the vice president to challenge the mental capabilities of the president and then get support from another large political body. And then there would be a back and forth between, as to whether or not Trump is actually fit. And if he's not, the vice president becomes acting president and gains presidential powers until the next election. I guess that's how it works. Mike Pence is not going to side against Trump. That's ridiculous. It's an unhinged plot. But here's what I see. I see Democrats acting with impunity. I see a media apparatus that screams far right all day, every day, even though they get arrested like that. I I see these New York Times journalists saying, I'm so terrified about what the far right is going to do after November 3rd. Why? They're getting arrested. I'm sure there are some groups that are better at this than the far left. But listen, man, the far right, the right wing groups that know how to use weapons, they just work for, for, for private security firms and contractors. It's more lucrative. And then they can go live wherever they want and do whatever they want. I am not worried about these groups. It seems like they easily get shut down. Heck, Trump supporters can barely have a rally without getting attacked and punched in the face. The, 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 the Democrats abuse their power. Gretchen Whitmer abused her power. Governor Wolf in Pennsylvania abused his power. And the courts shut them down. That's a relief to me. But for 133 days, Antifa acts with impunity to the point now where the National Guard was deployed in two states yesterday and put on standby in two other states. That is the real problem. So long as the FBI does their job and shut down, shuts down right wing groups, fine, whatever. But I don't see them doing it to the far left. These left wing Antifa groups that have been organizing forever are not getting shut down. They're just acting with impunity. And don't ask me why. But I'll tell you what, that's the bigger threat. They're out on the streets as we speak, preparing for more violence this weekend. Can we please shut them down? So I don't know what to tell you, man. 
This is just how I see it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I hope that we don't actually see an escalation in conflict. But I'll tell you what, I think it's funny that the principal argument against my talk of civil war comes from the left. I wonder why that is when you see stories like this. Maybe it's because the left knows what they want and they don't want someone like me calling them out. But I didn't make it up. Go ask Spike Lee. Go ask CNN. Go ask The Atlantic. Go ask The Guardian. They've, they're the ones who brought it up. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at youtube.com slash timcastnews at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.